just once said, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. The challenge there, you try and make, make, make an organisation like that, is that the world is full of risks, many of which we don't know or can't see in our current eyes and our current vision. Like any organisation, my organisation has an extensive risk program. And we work very hard to try and take all those risks and get them down to a graph that makes management happy. That is, managers like to think they've got all the risks under control. The only problem is that's based on a set of assumptions that are false. I'm sure that at Three Mile Island, they thought that the alarm system was great and would help manage risks until they had 600 alarms come up in a matter of seconds. And all the controls we have in place to manage those risks are based on assumptions that can fail. Secondly, our organisations and ourselves tend to be blind to large events. I heard this morning Commissioner Lim spoke about the Russian bushfires, the Pakistan floods and the Haitian earthquake. There are mega events out there, there that will happen in all of our cities at some point in time that are never on our risk matrices, on our risk plans. So the challenge is making an organisation that can, or giving an organisation the capability to bounce through events like that. So what I'm going to talk about this afternoon is five themes of building an organisation that is aware of risk, aware of how the world works around them in a world that's rapidly changing. Getting managers to think about the concept of landscape change. I'm going to talk about why plans fail shortly and how we really want to create a people with high adaptive capacity, the ability to innovate and solve problems on the run. That therefore we have to achieve a couple of things with our leadership styles, our leadership team. And maybe it's all about having friends out there, connections around the world who can help solve the problem on the day. And last of all, what about our organisation's culture and character? What do we really want to have our organisation be like so it bounces through in times of adversity? So the first challenge is making our organisations risk aware, helping our organisations see the world and the challenges around them. If I take my own organisation, we've tried to become a really good learning organisation about the global risk to our, to our sector. Uh, this is um, back in Iraq, and this was insurgencies attacking the water supply system. It happened quite a number of times, and we saw this was a, was a risk, so we actually invested a lot of research to understand how pipelines fail once they've been targeted with bombs. We learned quite a bit from that. We looked at Singapore and saw in 2003 your threat by terrorists against your water supply system. We learnt from that and, and actually implemented the pilot changes about our site preparation models and our site mitigation risks, uh, um, site, mitig site mitigation controls. We looked at New Zealand, this was Kaikoura in New Zealand, and on the side of the reservoir you can see some writing that says, ban 1080. 1080 is a poison used to kill possums over in New Zealand. And a set of eco-protesters had opened the hatch on the roof of the water reservoir, placed 1080 baits around the hatch. Management drove past for two days looking at the writing saying, I wonder what that means. And it finally climbed up on the roof to find out and that became a lead story on CNN worldwide and attracted media attention from right around the world. So we learned a lot from that one. In 2007, Britain had their, their big flood event. This is a, a water treatment plant operated by Seven Trent Water that was inundated. The lessons for us there was they supplied 3.2 million bottles of water a day in that to keep the community going. They actually took over a total airfield to do that. They called the army in to make it happen. Part of the problem was it crashed the actual recycling system as the community tried to dispose of 3.2 million bottles per day. So we got a chance to understand all the complications in trying to supply bottled water to 200,000 people. Then we went and looked at Walkerton in Canada. Walking in, in Canada, um, back in uh, May 15, back in 2000, this bottom picture is a, is a, is a well. And in 2000, that was a cast iron well that was perforated with holes through lack of maintenance. They had 100 millimetres of rain one afternoon and there was a, a, a feedlot for cows on the hill to the left. It washed into the swamp on all that cow waste. As a result of that, it was sucked into the town's water supply through the holes in the cast iron pipe. The first person to die from that virus, which was an E. coli virus, was a baby four months old that died in its mother's arms. Five other people died over the next week. If only the town had 
actually activated its chlorine system 